Hello, you wonderful degenerates, and welcome to Season 4, Episode 13 of Monster Mates. Yes, everybody, welcome Sp back. Spencer, please choose a number between 1 and 90. Uh, you know what? 11. 11 is a number you haven't chosen yet, and it is going to be Night Gaunt. I don't know what that is. You sound, it sounds like it made up. Uh, well, I believe that is an encyclopedia monster, if I recall. Yes, it is. Ooh. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, without getting into it, what are we going to rate her? Ooh. <laughs> I like her. All right. I'm going to give this. I will give her an eight and off of visual looks alone. I'm going to go with a nine off of visual looks alone. I'm very curious about this one. All right. Fiends with a bizarre appearance who have their whole body covered in a black film and one of the races of monsters belonging to the abyss. They are poor at expressing emotion and it's difficult to read their intentions from their expression. Since they serve someone and basically act in accordance with their master's will, it's hard to tell what they themselves are thinking. But if a human strikes their fancy, they'll soar through the sky and carry him where he wants to go. Conversely, if they don't, uh, if they don't care for a human, Apparently, they'll snatch him up and carry him off into the sky, only to drop him right in the middle of a swarm of monsters in heat, so it seems they do indeed have emotions. Uh, normally, they lurk in dark places such as underground or in caves, but when night falls, they fly around the sky, intent on swooping down on human men who strike their fancy and wrestling them. Their behavior after that is quite eccentric. Even after binding a man, they don't go straight into attempting copulation, instead only caressing him intently. At a glance, from the way it looks as they're busily mo uh, yes, as they're busily moving fingertips stroke a man's body, it even seems as though they are tickling the man. But the purpose of this behavior is to coat the man's body in the mucus secreted by their own body. Mucus is thoroughly and persistently plastered all over a man from his face and chest all the way down to his lower parts. And as it is, as it permeates his body, so too does the pleasure induced by their caresses intensify. A man whose expression was filled with disgust and bewilderment at the beginning will end up grinning lewdly later on. At this point, they finally seek to copulate with the man, and after even his mind has been violated by the mucus, he will not refuse it. In fact, sometimes the man will end up attempting to initiate intercourse on his own. The pleasure induced by their body is painted, painted over a man's mind along with the mucus. And once a man has known it, he won't be able to stop grinning lewdly at them and lusting insatiably for them. Once the mucus has completely permeated a man's body through intercourse, his nature will change so that he will become a fitting husband for them. He, had, he obtains a grotesque demon-like form, and along with that, he can secrete and control mucus just as they do. Plus, he'll be able to dissolve the film covering their body by touching it. Additionally, their expression actually changes in a variety of ways, and their husband will then be able to sense their emotions, although it is said that they still appear emotionless to, do to those other than their husband and fellow members of the same race. After obtaining a husband, they become dependent on their husband's lust and will, and they will mostly think and act in an, ob in an obedient manner. Generally, they'll end up spending their time constantly copulating. Based on their appearance, it is easily possible to, dis to distinguish whether or not they have a husband. Married individuals have a grotesque creature, which is their husband grappling them from behind, with countless tentacles crawling all over them, and it can even look like they're having sex in the rear entry position. Moreover, the black film covering the body of such an individual is not their own, but their husband's mucus. The film uh, pulses vigorously squeezing and rubbing their breasts and buttocks according to their husband's will, continually providing pleasure and ecstasy. The husband is also freely able to return to human form, but since their husband has gained total dominance over them by constantly joining with them and continually providing pleasure, it seems they experience anxiety when he changes into human form and separates from them and it's said they will behave in a clingy manner towards their husband. We also have a few translator notes here. Translator note number one. 
As with the misspelling of Girtabiru on the English lettered name of the Japanese profile and Casey's use of Neres instead of Nerid, uh, we make it practice. Uh, we make it a practice to change them to more and uh, more familiar and accurate English lettered names, unless it's shown that there is a reason for the change or that it is otherwise intentional. Uh, Casey's use of a less common spelling of Chimera, for instance, for his Chimera was due not uh, was due to him not wanting the name associated with other sorts of Chimera, familiar to the Japanese use of the Chimera spelling. With this in mind, the creature it is based on does not use a plural except when applicable, and due to the way he wrote it in Katakana, uh, which is Naito go, uh, Gonto, uh, <laughs> it seems like Night Gaunts should be singular at. Uh, as the TS ending is usually uh, transliterated into katakana as su or rather than to. We, of course, will change it back to gaunts if this proves to be Casey's intention. Translator note number two. The, quote, since they serve someone, end quote, line may be a vague reference to another abyssal being, or just a reference to the night gaunts having a nature that, that desires to serve. It's rather unclear. <laughs> okay. So... These girls basically corrupt you to the mind and the soul with with the, with their black film with their with their, their black mucus with their sl with their black slime mucus yes yeah <laughs> gross yeah that that part's not so great everything else seems pretty ne neato I don't know uh -huh. I don't like the emotionless shit I'm, here's I'm the, not a fan of that I mean I'm a fan of that. But here's the thing, you yeah. can't, it's only you can't tell what their emotions are. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. They have uh -huh. emotions. Yes. But, you know, I don't want to look at some girl and, be, and her just be like, yeah, no, I'm so <laughs> filled with joy. I love uh... this. Oh, yeah, deeper. Like, no, I, does nothing, <laughs> does nothing for me. Oh, that's fair. But you can learn what their emotions actually are, but you have to sell your body and mind to them yeah, first. Yeah, like, I'm not, <laughs> listen, I'm not gonna do that. Oh. Ma'am, you're a, you're a hot number, but I don't want to take that number. <laughs> I'm not a fan of this monster. I think, I uh -huh. think overall, uh -huh. th she could be better. That is fair. I think if you do, here's the thing. This seems to be a very weird dynamic for this girl, where it's like, at one point, she wants to serve you, but at the same time, in order for her to serve you, you kind of have to transform yourself into, like, her species as well. Yeah, she's like, it's... I'm not gonna fuck you unless you're one of me. It's... <laughs> well, no, she'll still have sex with you, but she'll try to transform you at the same time. It's like, I, I like her, but it, uh -huh. it, it, even if she's like, I'm not that much of a fan, she'll just drop you into a pit. <laughs> With other monster girls. Yeah, but I don't know which ones. Yeah, that you're gonna have to kind of gamble on that one. I don't want that gamble. <laughs> I don't want to play that gamble card. I mean, your dice rolls are usually pretty good, at least. Yeah. You, you don't think your monster girl luck is as good? It's not that I don't think it's as good. Uh huh. I just know I I would say I have like a 50-50 on whether or not uh, I like monster girls or not, depending on what they are. Okay, fair. Or maybe a 60-40. I just know my personal luck <laughs> that doesn't have to do with dice rolls uh -huh. will fuck me over. <laughs> That's that is quite fair. So yes, obviously big negative is if you don't like Kudere, this is, this is not going to be the girl for you. If you don't like trans, if you don't like have a transformation kink, this is obviously going to uh, be a negative point for you as well. But if you like both of those, I I myself very much like Kudere's. And transformation things is very much hit or miss, I'll be honest. What is it about Kudere's that you like where they just don't show emotion or happiness be or love? Here's the... Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> that's certainly a loaded way to phrase that. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's the thing of they're, they're protective at first, but once you know them more and more, they start to get more expressive with you, is the thing. It's like you, they're hiding, they're kind of just emotionally hiding in their shell until you get to know them more and more and they start to trust you more and more. And then you start to actually, you know, experience their emotions and it's super adorable and cute. I feel like, I feel like that there's a limit. Uh-huh. Because I've seen stories where it's like, this girl is a cute area. Okay, the more you get to know her, the more she'll open up and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Sure, whatever. Yes. But I've also seen stories 
where that just never happened. <laughs> and they're just, that's their personality. That's just oh. who they are. They have mm-hmm. no anything in their brain. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to strand. <laughs> How can anyone be like, I love you? Oh. She has showed no emotions. Oh. No, nothing. No feedback, no nothing. Just a... I would, it's, it's like fucking a plank of wood. <laughs> but there is also other ways to show love as well, I would argue, for kuderes. Yeah, but kuderes won't show it. Well, no, I mean, emotionally, no, but in other acts, yes, so in you, other like, ways. So, like, she would buy you something? Is that what you're thinking? I'm thinking she would either give you a massage, she would, she could buy you things if that's what you want. I'm just saying, like, in general, like, yeah, like you said, massage. There, or... there are other ways for her to express her love beyond just, like, emotional expressions, is what I'm getting at. I see. That, I could get behind that more, mm-hmm. but I can't get behind, like overall like just vacancy <laughs> like no one's fucking home right oh, and then like I, I i have to live in this fucking apartment in her <laughs> fucking head empty oh. and then like randomly like a year or so later someone else will just show up and be like who the fuck is this <laughs> Why are you showing me your emotions now? Gross. Oh my goodness sakes. I feel like I like the characters that have their more of their emotions or like their superficial emotions on the front. Uh-huh. And then the more you get to know them, you're like, oh, that's a front. I like that more. Like your Sundares. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. Which that checks out. Um, let's see. I like, I like it when characters put a front on. Yes, I also like characters who constantly say they hate me when they actually love me. That's totally clear and concrete. So here's the thing. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. Tsunaries don't legitimately look up, go to your fucking face and say, I fucking hate you. You're just, like, they, they, they don't fucking do that. Uh-huh. They'll fucking poke at you. They'll toy with you. It's like, it's uh-huh. like, it's like, it's like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, She's poking fun at you. Could have fooled me. <laughs> I think that, I think the, I'm guessing, you have, do you have like a real life tsunere that you're thinking of? Uh, yeah, in, in, in occasions, yes, but. So they're not doing it right. They're just <laughs> dumb bitches. Yes, and that's kind of like with your point with kuderes as well. <laughs> okay, you know what? Yes. Point we, taken. Exactly. We shake on it. <laughs> yeah, shake on it. Absolutely. We shook on it. We're shaking. We, All right. For the audience, we are literally physically shaking, shaking hands. hands. We shook <laughs> on it. We understand each other now. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. With all that being said, I can absolutely understand people not being into Kuderes as well, especially with like a girl like this, to where you can only understand like their physical, emotional expressions if you turn into their same race. I can completely understand someone not being into that. I just I just want feedback. Yes, absolutely, and that is fair. I think I think that is for me, I want whether it's good or bad feedback. I want something in return. Yeah. I want, like, I got you something, mm-hmm. and I don't want nothing for right. it. I want you to say thank you. I want you to, like, like if I was giving it to a girl, maybe blush, maybe laugh, or something. Mm-hmm. You, with Kuderes, <laughs> I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is uh, Evangelion. Oh, with Ray. I'm yep. thinking of Ray. Yep, 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 yep. Fucking... <laughs> She might be on the most extreme side of Kuderes, though. I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, she's probably on the most extreme side. Absolutely. Um, because like I don't think of Kuderi girls as the same as being shy. Because you can mm-hmm. have shy girls. And oh yeah. Like, oh, she's just shy. You know, mm-hmm. she'll open up. But Kuderi girls in my head <laughs> is like her. Right. Oh. Uh... Where she just like nothing, no motion, mm-hmm. nothing, and you're like. Fucking her, giving the best sex ever, <laughs> and she's just looking at you like just deadpan face, like yeah, I'm into that, no emotion. I can just, I just imagine like you can literally feel her coming around your dick, but her face is just like a. Uh, slice. Yeah, that's what I'm imagining. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. She's literally just like a. But I, you could put a bag on her head and not tell the difference of emotion. Oh my goodness sakes. You might as well get a fucking oh. sex doll. Just get a get a thousand dollar sex oh, doll and fuck that. In sakes. my in that's a, in my head. Oh my goodness! But just for straight up fucking a night gaunt, like okay. So what do you think? Okay, so how I'm thinking of this for like the night gaunt transformation thing? Yeah, I'm thinking like a Dark Soul status effect. Like, how many times do you gotta pound this girl before the transformation like fully completes? And how long in between fucking her? 
does it take for you not to be at risk of getting transformed? Right. So there are, there are two ways to think about this. One yes. is, like you said, like, hey, is it a Dark Souls buildup over time? Right. Like, as or, you're, like, you fuck her at night, and right. that's, like, half the bar. Right. And you're like, right, I gotta step away for, like, a day or two mm-hmm. before the bar go down. Right. Or is it, like, a permanent thing? She fucks you, and then all of a sudden... Just forever, there's just a mm-hmm. little thing in your head, and every time you do it after that, it just stays in there. And then it grows every time you fuck her, and then it gets to a point where you go, Oh, there's no turning back. She's, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them. I would argue this. Because she is a fiend, you go to a priest. <laughs> so you fuck her on the holy water? No, no, no. What I'm saying, you, <laughs> put, you fuck her Saturday night, and then Sunday morning you go to a priest, and I'm like, my brother... My brother in Kenko Cross, give me a blessing and cleanse me. I see. That's that. That is what I would say to to your other uh, to the other side of that. I see. Ooh. Like I'm looking at her, right? Uh-huh. And I'm thinking to myself, she's hot as hell. Yeah. And I would absolutely fuck the shit out of her. Yes. But the problem is that. I'm not a big fan of her mood or her mm-hmm. emotions. I'm not a big fan of her wanting every, like, turning into one of her, mm-hmm. uh, like, one of her toy things. I'm not a fan of, like, becoming brain dead. Basically. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what she wants. She wants you just to become brain dead. <laughs> just to be like, oh, you're my sex doll now. <laughs> we become her sex doll now. Is that the case? Because she has a subservient nature to her. I don't think that's the case at all. Because that's not you initially. She eventually, it's like, oh, yes, of course. I'm obedient to you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. As she turns you into the thing that she wanted all along. Let's see. Hold on. I'm going to reread this. I don't think that's the case. I, 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 I took it as she turns you into a thing where you become a sex maniac and you all you want is sex and with her and basically you want to fuck her. And, but she's like, oh, if you, if that's what you want. And it's like, no, that's this was your fucking plan. Uh, you just, wanted this. Just, you did this to me. Uh, after, uh, after obtaining a husband, they become dependent on their husband's lust and will. I'm imagining the lust and will gets enhanced and turns into what she wanted, though, because she, you are now the husband, right? That's also not written on here, so... I just imagine, right? Yeah. If you're fucking her all mm-hmm. the time and you are her husband, right. she turns you into that. That's what happens. Well, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's the nature of the beast, as it were. <laughs> yes, and that's what I mean. I'm like, I don't know if that's the best. Uh, it all depends on what you want to get yourself into with this girl. And for sure, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, so the positives, at least, if you decide to take the deal and go through the transformation, you basically become almost a part of her. Like, you know, when we did the E10 moment girl, like the whole cloth thing. Yep. Co- to an extent, you kind of also become that with this girl, where you're just constantly fucking her from behind. <laughs> sort of your mucus is fusing together into d- literally the dance of the double backed beast. Quite literally. The dance of the double backed bees. Yes, I love that euphemism for sex so much. <laughs> What's going on in there? That's just the double backed beast. It's, oh, okay. it's the dance of the double backed beast. <laughs> that sounds so badass. As someone who doesn't know what that is. Oh. Like, that sounds amazing. You're like, eh, well. Oh my goodness sake. I, I think I can give my rating on this. All right, yes, I think I can give mine as well. I'm, I'm going to have to give this like. I, I'm gonna give this like a five. A five, okay. Like, like a five. I like how she looks. I think she mm-hmm. looks cool. I think if you could like go to a brothel mm-hmm. for a night and go at it, and then the next, and then like she doesn't fuck with you, and it's a build up like Dark Souls stuff. I could yeah. do it. I could mm-hmm. go to a brothel. I would fuck the shit out of her. They would be fun and be hot. Yeah. But if it were, if if she if it was out in the wild, and not uh-huh. at a brothel, and it, she just starts doing that shit to me, <laughs> I'm like. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I don't want to do this with you. Oh my goodness. I think for my final rating, I think I got to give it a six. I'll be real. I got to give it a six. So the, we did both go down. We did both go down. The only reason, because don't get me wrong. again, I'm like, this is your type. This is my type. And the only reason this isn't lower is because she's a kudere. Gotcha. Uh, don't get me wrong. I sometimes like transformation stuff. But like I said earlier, it all depends on the transformation. And I cannot get over the use of mu- the, the, the specific word use of mucus. 
Yeah. That's not exactly great. <laughs> I think I think for me, if a transformation happens, there are two kinds of transformations. Yes. There is a mental transformation, uh -huh. which is what she's doing to you. Right. And then there is a physical transformation. Which is also what she does. Which is, she does both, which yeah. I don't like. <laughs> I want the physical transformation if I was into one. I'd right. be like... If you want to change me to look like you, mm -hmm. but I still I'm still me, yeah. Then sure, yeah. But, but the second you're forcing me to become something I'm not in my head, I'm like I don't want to be this. That is absolutely fair. I don't like it. That is absolutely fair. But ladies and gentlemen, what would you rate a night gaunt, and would you take the deal to become a night gaunt yourself, or are you going to visit the holy temple of Kenko Cross and get yourself purified? Tell us about your mucus-infused dream. <laughs> Why did you have to phrase it like that? Please tell us in the comments down below. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, feel free to give it a like. If you want to see more, please consider subscribing. And if you want updates on the show, feel free to follow us over on Twitter or follow me, Trevor, individually as well. And be sure to give some love to the amazing artist who did the thumbnail for this episode. I'll see you later.